Hello YouTube land, Jason back again for part two where I will be cutting out my curves boards, the tabs, and then I'll be showing you how I do step two of my finishing process, which is, again, cut out the tabs, take the boards, lightly sand them, and after that, I run them through my router table and clean up the sides and the edges. So stay tuned. So I use my Bowers oscillating tool that I got from my son for Christmas. Thank you, son. It's awesome. Now I will show you. I just cut up the tabs. All I do is just find the tab and then cut. Simple as that. And now the board is free. Still have little pieces of tabs, and that's what we use the router table for. So now I'll go to sanding this board. The next step, just a light over the top and on the back. And then after that, I'll use the router table to get the tabs off with a straight bit, and then I'll use an eighth inch roundover bit on the corners. trick I do is I use this it is a sandy nylon brush you can get it at Harbor Freight you can get it at Menards I believe you can get it at Home Depot also possibly Fleet Farm but anytime you do V carving even when you do a secondary cut it sometimes keeps little fuzzies this does a great thing for getting them out Now, if you can see, the lines are nice and clean. I don't know if you can see that. There's no fuzzies inside the lines here anymore. So those lines are perfect for painting now. So on to the next step, over to the router table. So here's my router table. It is a Ryobi, not a top of the line router table, but I got it at auction for 15 bucks. And the only thing I was missing 
are the three screws that hold your router to the table. So I had to go to Ace Hardware, highly recommend Ace Hardware. They always have the specialty screws. These were the five 16th inch by 18 thread by three quarter inch long flathead. And all they had were the, uh, the Allen key heads. They didn't have the Phillips, which is fine with me. I got a whole set of Allen's, so I had the perfect size for it. So I am now gonna take my board. I'm gonna set it up here so you can see my tabs are on the bottom but it's flush and straight on top so I get the roller wheel right near the top just a little bit lower then I will lock it in and then I'll run the board through clean up all the tabs and after that I'll switch over to an eighth inch roundover bit and I'll set that in there and then I'll do the bottom and then the top and get a little round edge and then I'll just lightly sand the sides and those round doors to get them smooth by hand. And then most of the work's done. Then all I gotta do is, again, any part that is centered for design by the customer, I do that. Also, I will show you, I will put a heat stamp on my board on the back for my logo. Always tag your product. Otherwise, other people are gonna take credit and steal it. So, very important for business. Tag your products with your logo. So now I got the sides nice and smooth. As you can see, straight, all the tabs are off. I also put a radius on either side of the router table. So I got a nice non-sharp edge. So now I use 220 sandpaper, whatever brand I get that's on sale. Doesn't matter to me as long as it works. And I just give it a rough, rough scratch just to give it a good clean look. I will cut a uh, sand off this X because I don't need it right now. I'll use it later on. I can just put a mark on it later. And I'll sand that off with the 220 also later on. Once the center part is cut out. The only negative with the router table is you know your routers are fixed at one speed. You gotta try to make sure you can get the burn marks off a little bit. But I like to do is I like to fold it and then cup it with the curved edges. Keep some curves. You know, it's a nice sanding though, so you don't make them sharp again. And this doesn't take long, a couple minutes. Then we do the other side. And I know some people are like, well, I don't have a router table. I don't have multiple routers. I only got my CNC machine and maybe a little 
you know, trim router or palm router. That's fine. You can do all this with the regular manual router. You can even do it on a CNC if you want to set up uh, the jigs with pegs so you can flip upside down. You can do both sides. You can use those router bits on here. You just got to set your speeds and feeds just right so you don't tear up the wood or the bit. So, just add a little bit of sanding, nothing fancy. This isn't a cutting board, so I want it to be beautifully smooth. It's a cribbage board. It's a game board. Feels good. Edges feel nice and smooth. No tabs. Front face nice and smooth. You can still see all the lettering for painting. I will um, use some compressed air. I don't have an air compressor, so I just buy compressed air cans for now. They're cheap at the dollar store. And I'll clean these out and the lines and the holes and then I will um, spray two coats of shellac on the front face here so then I can paint the letters and the lines and be careful with the lines so you don't get paint in the holes and then I can sand it down now again and take off all the extra paint that's on top because the shellac is keeping the, the woods safe from the paint getting into the, the pores or fibers of the wood and then after that, the letters will be painted in, and the lines will be painted in. That's it. And also, of course, the center part cutout will be painted also. And then when you sand it, you got wood left, so then I can put the oil on it, and that's a finished product. But I have one more thing I'm going to show you. I am going to add my logo to the back here with a heat stamp. So, I will go get my heat stamp. which is right here a brass stamp I got off of Etsy from someone else who makes them yes I know I could have cut this out myself I'm not real big on cutting metals right now maybe aluminum but I'm not big on cutting metals right now I'm just trying to do what I know and stay with that then I have my Benzomatic with igniter torch so I can heat it up now also, do not apply your heat stamp immediately to your board. Use a scrap piece of wood. Test it out like I do. Make sure it's not too hot, not hot enough, but get it right in the middle somewhere where it's just about right. I do 60 seconds and then I test it. Not hot enough.
We found them. That's pretty good right there. Now don't touch it. <laughs> I'm just laying it down. I'm not worried about being perfect. And there you go. That fast. You don't want to leave it on too long. Now this is extremely hot. I would wait until I have a bunch of boards to do. Because I have to let it set and cool off. I don't have a bucket for it with water yet. A metal bucket. Don't use a plastic bucket if you set this in. If you just drop it in the water and pick it back out, you can use a plastic bucket. Otherwise, make sure you use a metal bucket. For right now, I just take it and I set it down on my concrete. Why? Because concrete doesn't burn. So I'll leave that there. And then you'll be like, well, the burn's not that good. Well, it's not bad. And I can also sand it down lightly, get a little bit of extra off. And there's my logo, FLD for FL Designs, or in the long way of saying it, Family Long Design, which, again, my wife created. It was cute, but it's a very long name, and we're shortening it down to FL Designs. So if you ever see this logo, this is my product. You know I made it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>